I assume will be brought up for final action yet this week is the vote on a stripped down China competition package. Now, gone is language combating China's unfair trade practices. Gone from our provisions preventing fentanyl and narcotics from entering the country. Gone is my proposal to stop subsidizing China through the low-cost low World Bank loans. Gone are provisions that I champion preventing the flood of counterfeit Chinese merchandise. And gone are condemnations of the Chinese Communist Party for the ongoing genocide of the Uyghur minority. Last year, I supported an earlier version of this bill in a large part because it included these very tough on China policies that I just mentioned are missing from this piece of legislation that the Senate will soon be voting on. But now these policies are out and more spending is in. It includes more than $76 billion in subsidies earmarked for a single industry, the semiconductor manufacturers. Semiconductors or chips are important, but that doesn't mean that we should write these companies a blank check. If incentives to encourage more semiconductor investment in the United States are necessary, they should be targeted. I understand the national security concerns, but simply mention the words national security isn't the end of the discussion. Proponents must show how these subsidies will accomplish their objectives. These sub subsidies are not targeted at domestic production of the advanced chips produced almost exclusively by our allies in Asia. Furthermore, these subsidies fail to include adequate safeguards to prevent companies receiving subsidies from turning around and you know what? Possibly investing in China. A lot has changed since Congress began talking about these subsidies more than a year ago. And the Senate passed this bill a long, long time ago. According to a recent Wall Street Journal editorial, the semiconductor industry has already announced $80 billion of U.S. investment by 2025. Moreover, there is growing evidence that a cheap chip glut is down the road, coming along. Yet, instead of looking to trim back or better target the subjects, this bill actually doubles down on corporate welfare. This bill now includes an expansive tax credit that will subsidize semiconductor manufacturers to the tune of about $24 billion. In total, American taxpayers will pay up to 40% of the cost of a sim semiconductor facility. That means individual companies are in line to receive billions in taxpayers' funds. For example, Intel has announced plans for a $20 billion facility. Taxpayers will write a check from, from a low of $4 billion to possibly a high of $8 billion checks for this one facility. I'm dumbfounded that my Democrat colleagues can justify this, and I say that because President Biden and his allies in Congress rant and rave about profitable corporations paying little or no tax. And yet, under this bill, some of the largest and most profitable companies in the world are poised to pay zero tax. In fact, unlike typical tax credits that reduce a company's tax bill, this one will allow a company to receive the credit as a cash payment exceeding any taxes that that company might pay. Outside of Senators, Senator Sanders 
Senate Democrats seem very unconcerned with making these large profitable corporations, quote unquote, as you hear them say all the time, pay their fair share. I hope that they keep this in mind when liberal groups inevitably point to more profitable multinationals not paying taxes. Don't try then and blame Republicans or the 2017 tax bill, which has resulted in rec record revenues coming into the federal treasury. In fact, the 2017 tax bill should be modeled for how to, we should be competing with China instead of targeting specific industries for lavish, sub lavish subsidies. We, reform our, we reformed our tax code to eliminate special interest loopholes while helping all industries compete on a global scale, including against China. A competitive tax code, pro-growth policies, and rule of law allows Americans do what Americans do best, and that is innovate. That is how we will outcompete China. In contrast, onshoring wasteful and inefficient Chinese industrial policies will only stifle innovation and weaken our dynamic economy, which is our great advantage. I yield the floor.